This company went from 2 million users to more than 8 million users in just three years. Here how the CEO made it happen on this episode of the Startup Spot Podcast, TLDL. Let's start at the beginning. Can you tell us what is StockTwits? Uh, yeah, so StockTwits, uh, you know, at its core is, uh, you know, one of the largest communities of uh, individual investors and traders uh, across the world, primarily US-centric, but, um, you know, founded about 14 years ago around the premise of connecting to, uh, you know, learn from each other, share ideas, and, uh, have fun, and hopefully profit in the, along the journey. When you came on to StockTwits, there were about 2 million users somewhere around there. Yeah. But in your time uh, at, at, you know, in this position, that number has gone up to almost 7 million. Oh, um, yeah. That's a, it's a pretty big increase. Um, what changes did you make that fueled this growth spurt? So we were just focused on making it a little bit better every day for the community, improving things, uh, whether it was little bugs or fixes or just, you know, minor UX changes to make things a little bit simpler, a little bit, you know, more understandable. And uh, focusing on that allowed us to be in the right place at the right time with the, you know, uh, massively increased interest in, uh, in retail investing. There's really two things I see going on there. They leveraged another platform to build their base. They, they took the success of someone else and used it to their advantage. But then the second thing is that they secured that base by creating their own ecosystem and getting users into that ecosystem. And, and obviously, you know, those things, they can both work, but they definitely work better together. Um, yeah. You know, when you, when you have a, a, a large base of users and you've got somewhere to put them because there's a lot of danger of staying on someone else's platform. I know, you know, in the in the corners of the internet that I hang out in, everybody talks about, you know, Facebook groups is is not the best place to have your your community or and Facebook's going to get picked on twice here, but you know that there was a change several years ago of like businesses on Facebook, they just changed the algorithm to where businesses really weren't getting seen anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And so they always talk about, you know, building your own platform or taking people to an email list or something like that. Do I mean, so with those two things being done, I mean, are you? do you look at this kind of the same way that I do or do you see something different? And with that, is there anything that you would have done differently had you been CEO at the time? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, having been an early Twitter user, I mean, I was on Twitter, I think back in 07 and I joined stock to it some 2010 as a user. Um, you know, I think this was actually pretty common back then, if you recall, where a lot of uh, platforms and, and apps or websites were jump-started on top of Twitter, on top of Facebook. Um, those were the two primary ones. And um, uh, and that's a great way, especially if you're looking at it, you know, I, I look at those networks as being horizontal networks, right? They're serving everybody in every which way, um, like Reddit does, like a Discord does, like Twitter does, like Facebook does. So they're serving everybody. But, you know, when you're looking to verticalize and find a niche that you want to address and give more tools to, um, starting on top and using that to solve the cold start problem in a network or in a you know, user-generated content platform uh, is is a is a very uh, smart idea. And, you know, many companies did it successfully back then. Um, but to your exact point, like once you reach a certain scale, you need to have ownership over it, you know, uh, and people are discovering, you know, we actually went through this with Twitter, if you recall, uh, I want to say it was like back in 2010, 11, where they uh, actually had a famous memo written by one of their engineers, uh, uh, essentially, you know, killing their API in a way, uh, where a lot of companies that were built on top of Twitter's API essentially were shut down now. I mean, yeah, hey, 10 years later, we're doing this again uh, at Twitter. Um, and so, yeah, StockTwits was smart at the time to move um, over to, so initially, you know, jump started cold start problem off of uh, from Twitter. But then, you know, by 2010, moved off onto our own platform. And so today it's all of our own content for the last 10, 12 years. Um, though people still think, you know, I do get plenty of questions like, oh, so you guys are on top of Twitter. We're like, nope, it's actually our own. Uh, and so I think that, you know, that's been a very uh, tried and true strategy, I think, for that like five, six year period. Um, and then, you know, Facebook came down on it as well, uh, you know, kind of hard. I, I want to say like maybe 2016, 17, somewhere around there. Um, but, you know, I would not have, uh, uh, I wouldn't have done it any differently. I think that was, you know, a, a tremendous decision because it is really hard to build community. As we're seeing, th there's, there's there's a lot of this going on with Reddit right now, um, with the with the change of the API, and and they are seeing 
the users who are the ones creating the value for the for the product itself kind of revolt um, yeah. at this at this potential change of, of an API. And so it seems like there's there's just a lot of a lot of levers that that can be pulled and a lot of risk in you know seemingly both directions at this point. Yeah, um, you know, once you're at this kind of scale that the Reddits of the world are at, uh, listen, they're not they're not wrong. They have to run a business. At the age of like being able to never be profitable is over. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, and and we touched upon that a little bit ago, but um, I really do think like, and I'm I'm like kind of a more of a value fundamental kind of build a business up from the you know kind of unit economics kind of guy, which has not been a you know a thing uh, in the last fifteen years. <laughs> so you have to ask the question like, hey, okay. When is scale scale that here you you keep telling us you're going to be profitable at scale? Like how big did Uber need to be before it could be you know before it could expect profits from it in a real business model from it? Right, right, uh, right. How big does Reddit need to be? Is it not big enough? Like I think it's pretty darn big. Like they should be able to be profitable, and so you do have to understand that if you're getting all these services and tools as a user from something. There's got to be something that gives back, um, and you know, maybe they could do it on advertising alone. I, I think that's you know very difficult, um, and I don't and I don't think it's unreasonable. Uh, I think communication uh, and uh, you know maybe the approach of the how it was done could have been a little bit better, but um, you know the general premise of what they're doing is not unreasonable. And uh, you know what, you're welcome to go try to you know, start your own startup and uh, build something of value there. So. Yeah. Maybe everyone should. Maybe everyone should go start a startup or give us the last words. What do you want to tell us? Um, you know, find your tribe. Uh, enjoy, like, you know, don't make uh, things don't need to be uh, so stressful online, right? I mean, uh, find your tribe, uh, you know, uh, enjoy it. And uh, for all the founders out there, listen, it's not easy. Um, find your tribe for that too. Found, being a founder, being a CEO is a lonely job uh, oftentimes, uh, you know. Stick to the community theme here and find find the people that you know you can talk to about the challenges that we have. If you're a founder CEO, like hey, feel free, like I said, reach out to me as well. Um, and uh, you know, uh, let's keep building. All right, thanks, Rishi. <laughs>